But the recruitment industry, which is a multi-billion pound industry, is structured in a way that automatically means that returners don't get a chance at the table. So I'm going to start a question off with Juliet. To ask Juliet, Juliet, looking at all of this data, looking at all of this research that we've been fortunate to have uh, this morning, what, in your experience, are the economic and social prerogatives for employing older, experienced people in the workforce? Why should we bother? Why is this important? Um, because if companies are going to thrive going forward, they need to take a step back and look at how they are attracting talent and retaining talent. Because the old school is uh, typically white middle-aged men running the business and younger women and men uh, being foot soldiers going up the ranks. And that's not going to be creating sustainable business, which is uh, all proof of DEI and ESG agendas. And the reasons are typically threefold. We are living longer. We are working longer. 30% of the workforce is now over 50 years of age, which equates to 9.4 million people. The state pension, we don't get that until we're 66. And then by 2028, which as of you know, only a few days ago, is now only four years away, we're going to have to work till 67. And I believe there's already legislation to crank that up to 68 and beyond. Uh, there are five generations now working in the workplace, which is the first time ever. And also, society is demanding a new way of working. People have had enough. The millennials we know are having enough. And everybody sort of says to me, oh, don't worry, Juliet, the millennials will sort it out. Well, I don't think they will if they don't see real role models further up the chain. Um, we all know we're going to have a new election at some point this year and possibly a new government, but there's nothing that I have seen or heard on the agenda from either leading party that is going to dramatically change the way schools are structured and caring is structured. And AI is, everybody is talking about AI, and unless I've missed something, I don't think AI is going to take over women having the babies and never will. So we have this. Like we have this transition going on and we need to see real role models in our businesses. And today we're here to talk about returners. And as the research has shown, there are hundreds of thousands of these women, high caliber women in the UK who uh, want to work, who have all the characteristics that Amanda has talked about. And they are motivated, they have experience and they want to work. But sadly, um, and I wasn't a recruiter before I came in and built two to three days, so I've had to learn it from being a woman on the outside, so to speak. But the recruitment industry, which is a multi-billion pound industry, is structured in a way that automatically means that returners don't get a chance at the table. And there are, and I have spoken to hundreds of returners. I've helped quite a few of them get jobs, but I've spoken to hundreds over the years where it feels like that. And I've really drilled down with them and asked them, what are the barriers that companies keep are blindsided to, they don't see? And I could talk a whole webinar on this, but I've been kept for a few minutes. So I'm just going to give you the top three things. If you are an employer and want to tap into these amazing women so that you plug the gaps at senior level, there are very simple things that you need to do. The first one is, for goodness sake, start putting it on your job adverts that returners are welcome to apply for the role. That sends out such a powerful message and it's only a few words on a job advert. Secondly, you need to be talking about what you're on your website and on your marketing communications, what you are doing to support women to thrive in the workplace. And I'm not talking about the junior women, I'm talking about the senior women, and you need to put it on your website um, and on your other comms. And then the next barrier is, is at the first interview. The stories that I have heard that are absolutely appalling about the way returners are dealt with at the first interview are shocking. You know, we live on that your CV is all predicated on your last job. Well, if your last job was maybe two, three, four, five, ten years ago, to have your first interview predicated around your first, your last job, 
you are putting that returner on the back foot, making them feel very pressurized from the very beginning. You instead need to have an interview that's around competency, around skill, behavioral questions, and show that they can demonstrate their value. And lastly, most senior people have at least a three to six month probationary period to show that they are a match for the company. I bet your bottom dollar, if you've done your interview properly, that woman will show that she's up to scratch within three to six months. 